Hi guys! Welcome to ANS 181 Engineering Mathematics. From the previous video, we discussed the initial value problems. Now, in this video, we're going to discuss differential equation as mathematical models. It is often desirable to describe the behavior of some real-life system or phenomenon, whether physical, sociological, or even economic, in a mathematical terms. The mathematical description of a system of phenomenon is called a mathematical model, and it is constructed with certain goals in mind. For example, we may wish to understand the mechanism of certain ecosystem by studying the growth of animal population in that system, or we may wish to date fossils by analyzing the decay of radioactive substance either in the fossils or in the stratum in which it is discovered. Construction of a mathematical model of a system starts with the identification of the variables that are responsible for changing the system. We may choose not to incorporate all these variables into the model at first. In this step, we are specifying the level of resolution of the model. Next, we make a set of reasonable assumptions or hypothesis about the system we are trying to describe. This assumption will also include any empirical loss that may be applicable to the system. Then, we express this assumption in terms of a differential equation. After that, we are going to solve the solution of our differential equation. Then after obtaining the solution, we display model prediction, for example graphically, to observe the behavior of our system. Then we check the model predictions with the known facts. So if it is necessary, we can alter the assumption or increase the resolution of the model and the cycle goes on until we achieve our best mathematical models for that specific system. So a mathematical model of a physical system will often involve the variable time t. So a solution of the model then gives the state of the system. In other words, the value of the dependent variable for appropriate values of p describes the system in the past, present, and future. In this part, I'll be providing some of the most common mathematical models that involve differential equation. First, we have the population dynamics. In modeling a population dynamics, we let p of t denotes the total population at time t. Then, the change of population with respect to time is directly proportional to the population for that specific time. So if we are going to convert this proportionality to an equation, we have dp over dp equals to some constant k times the population p. So this one is a differential equation since this involved the function p and its derivative. So k here is a constant of proportionality and k must be greater than 0 since we are dealing with population growth. Now we also have radioactive decay. For radioactive decay, we denote at as the substance remaining at time p. Then the change of the substance with respect to time is directly proportional to the amount of substance present at that specific time. Same with the population dynamics, we convert it into an equation. So we have this dA over dP equals to kA, where k is a constant of proportionality and k is less than zero since we are dealing with a decay model. So if you notice, a single differential equation can serve as mathematical model for many different phenomena. For this one, we have identical mathematical model for different system. 
Next, we also have the Newton's Law of Cooling and Warming. So, to model a Newton's Law of Cooling and Warming, we denote P of T as the temperature of a body at a time T. And T sub M is the temperature of the surrounding medium. Then, we have this proportionality. So, the change in temperature with respect to time T is directly proportional to the difference of the temperature of the body and the surrounding temperature. We convert it into an equation. Then we have this dt, change in temperature with respect to time, is equal to k times the difference of the temperature of the body and the surrounding temperature. So, K here is a constant of proportionality. Next, we have series circuits. So, from Kirchhoff's second law, we have this equation L d squared Q over dt squared plus R dQ over dt plus 1 over C Q equals to E of T, where Q of T is the charge and dQ of T over dt is our current or the change in charge with respect to time is our current IT. So current IT and charge QT are measured in amperes and columns. Consider a single loop series circuit shown in this figure containing an inductor, resistor, and a capacitor. The current in the circuit after the switch is closed is denoted by I of T. The charge on the capacitor at time T is denoted by Q of T. The letters L, R, and C are known as inductance, resistance, and capacitance respectively. So here, we can see the relationship of our current I that passes through resistor, capacitor, and our inductor. Next, we have the falling bodies. So to construct a mathematical model of the motion of body moving in a force field, one often starts with Newton's second law of motion. Recall from the elementary physics that Newton's first law of motion states that a body either will remain at rest or will continue to move with a constant velocity unless acted on by an external force. In each case, this is equivalent to saying that when the sum of force F equals to summation of F of K, that is the net of the resultant force acting on the body is zero. Then the acceleration A of the body is zero. Newton's second law of motion indicates that when the, when the net force acting on a body is not zero, then the net force is proportional to the acceleration A or more precisely, F equals to Ma, where M is the mass of the body. Now suppose a rock is being tossed upward from the roof of a building as illustrated in the figure. What is the position S of T of the rock relative to the ground at time T? The acceleration of the rock is the second derivative d squared S over dt squared so if we assume the upward direction is positive and no force acts on the rock other than the force of gravity, then we have this m d squared s over dt squared equals to negative mg. So we just have the f equals to the summation of force k. f is just equal to ma and the summation of force acting on a body is just the force due to gravity. So we have negative mg. Since we have acceleration, it's just the second derivative of our position s with respect to time. So d squared s over dt squared is substitute for our acceleration a. So we divide both sides by m. We have this equation d squared s over dt squared equals to negative g. 
So we can use initial value problem on solving this model. So we have the differential equation, second derivative of s with respect to time is equal to negative g. So at time t equals to zero, we have the position of our body at s equals s sub zero. And the first derivative of our position at t equals to zero is the velocity or the initial velocity of our body. So to apply the initial value problem here, we just have to integrate our differential equation with respect to time twice. So integrating it with respect to variable t, we have here the first integration, we have ds over dt equals to negative g t plus c. Then we integrate it again with respect to t. Then we have s of t equals to negative one half g t squared plus c one t plus c two. So we have this solution for this second order differential equation. So now we can apply this initial condition. Applying the first condition, so at time t equals to 0, our s is just equal to s sub 0. Then, we have negative 1 half g times t equals to 0 plus c1 t equals to 0 plus c2. Now, this one will be cancelled. So, our C2 is just equal to S sub 0. So, to get the value of our C1, we apply this second condition, S prime of 0 equals to V sub 0 on this equation. So, our S prime equals to V sub 0 at T equals to 0. So, we have negative G times 0 plus C1. This one will be cancelled. So, our C1 is equal to V sub 0. So, we already solved the value of our arbitrary constant. So, our particular solution here will become S of T equals to negative 1 half GT squared plus our C1 is V sub 0 times T plus our C2 is just equal to S sub 0. So this one is familiar to you because this is a formula for solving the position of a free falling body at specific time. In this video, I just presented some of the common application of differential equation as mathematical model. So I hope you learned from this video. So our next topic will be finding a solution for first order differential equation using separable variable. See you on our next discussion.